I let Miles have a free hand in the studio. And anything that I always encourage him to use electronic equipment. Because if we didn't have it, I'd order it. Whether he used it or not, that was another matter. Like he, I think I was the first one to give him a Fender Rhodes piano. And I got, didn't give him one, I gave him two. And I ordered three. They ruined the first two. Chick Corea ruined the first two because they were on the road. And then Miles came to call me up and said he wanted the last one. I said, the last one is mine. He said, I don't give a shit. I don't want that. I don't want that. I said, Miles, you want that goddamn thing? I said, come and get it. And he came down. <laughs> and they took the third one away. I don't know whatever happened to it. But, uh, but you know, in the studio, I was always free-flowing. I wanted things to really happen. I wanted things to be spontaneous because I knew from my past experience what one could do with a raw tape. I mean, I had ideas perking in my head and Miles would have said, you remember that little thing that we did yesterday? I said, yeah, I remember that. He said, I want that to be put in the record. I said, leave it to me, leave it to Beaver. I said, I put the goddamn thing in there. And there were times when we used cassettes and into masters. And he'd send me up a cassette. I said, look it, out of your mind. I mean, you know, that we're, we're in the 20th, 20th century. Everything has to be stereo, this. I said, look, I'll do it. Shut up, God, send me the goddamn tape. And he would send me the tape. And this is how I made all of it. With Bitches Brew, it was relatively easy. A couple of people came into the studio and said, this stuff is dynamite. I said, I know it. And when we finish with it, it's going to be even better. And it, it turned out, to, you know, uh, it's like, you know, with, with, with Miles at the helm and all the guys there. The, I think he had Chick Corea, uh, Joe Zamanoff, everybody. And everybody, because I didn't care what they played. You want to jump on somebody, you know, solo or whatever, and make it a multiple thing. That was all right, too, because in those days, I might have had six tracks or eight tracks. I can't remember what this was. I don't think it was done with three with four tracks. It might have been done with eight tracks. So I said, hey, I could use this, you know. I could drop this up, put that in, add this, add that, and maybe use Miles in, in a sort of a reverb way, in a different way, with all the machines that I have at my disposal, and come up with something quite unique. I didn't know, you know, when we finished with it, it was going to be as great as it is. But it, but it is. It's a great record. I think that's is that uh, mm -hmm. that's it over there. But there were a lot of, uh, you know, I, I I never looked for the moment, as I I was always on to the next project. But I knew that, that we had something, you know, and uh, and with all the electronics and the gimmicks, because I don't think I don't think he was aware what what really went on in the editing, because a lot of musicians used to tell me they would hear the stuff on the radio and they would say, who the hell is that? And somebody said, well, that's Miles' last record. The guy said, I was on that record. Is that what we did? Is that what we did? <laughs> I mean, they, some of them wouldn't even recognize the, uh, the material. With Miles, it was always when he was available. I, he said, I want to record. I said, okay, let's do it. What are we going to do? He'd call me up in the middle of the night and say, listen to this. I said, listen to what? He said, listen to this. And he'd play something for 40 minutes on the phone. He got a sheet. I'm sitting there and I'm lying there and I'm listening to Miles Davis at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning with some, something he had done. And then, he, then he'd want to critique. <laughs> I said, well, you know, this is nice. I said, are we going to do it? I said, that's fine. I think you're you're on the right road. We'll we'll do it tomorrow. And we'd come in the studio. Now, I would take out. Now we might have recorded for five months, and I said, oh, I need to I need a piece there. 
I might go back in, in one of his tracks and take something out and put it in Bitches Brew. And I was I do that with a lot of his stuff. You know, just when something I didn't have something and I wanted it, I'd go back one or two sessions before or five sessions before because I remember there was a couple of good tracks. And every, I used to have stacks of tapes in the editing room. Stacks. They used to come in and say, look, can you clean out this, this place here? Jesus Christ, you got every tape in the vault here. I said, well, I may need it. And I would listen to something and I'd say, I need those eight bars or those 16 bars. That's just what I want. 